Okay, so continuing my video review, I really want to get into what my experience was with this telescope. So I already outlined what the telescope's capabilities were. So let's go back to these filters for a second. So I have only used the blue one, because whenever I tried to view Saturn, the really hard thing about viewing Saturn is it's so tiny. At its opposition date, on the best years, it's only about 16 arc seconds wide, so however high magnification, it's still pretty tiny. So I have not used the yellow filter for Saturn. I've only used, as I said, the blue filter. So in 2018, when Mars and Saturn and Jupiter have their oppositions again, I will use the red and the yellow and the blue. I still haven't used the green. I don't know if that's going to be very good because that's used for viewing some of the outer planets. So, with my experience with this telescope, it's a really great telescope, but with any telescope, you know, accessories can only go so far. But, um, Everything is really good on it. So I have viewed, for instance, Jupiter. You can see the reddish bands, the red and white bands. It's a really nice, um, clean view. And so, um, but the thing about um, reflectors, reflectors, this is a reflector telescope. They're really great telescopes. They have um, really good image quality and a really fast, focal ratio. A focal ratio, you get a focal ratio by multiplying the aperture of a telescope by its magnification. So minus 4.5 the aperture times the original magnification was 30. So that would be 115, but that's not working, so I don't know. I can research it, but um, so yeah, this is a really good telescope. We have used it for viewing, um, we do it anywhere around the house, anywhere from the front yard to the backyard. It's of course better in the backyard because of less light pollution. But, so, um, the thing with the reflector telescope, what you've got to keep in mind, is that because it's a reflector, it relies on mirrors, so it will flip the image upside down. So if you're looking at something in the upper left corner, it will really be in the bottom right, and vice versa. So, because of how reflectors work with those mirrors, they're experts at getting those sharper images. However, it really depends on what you're viewing, because there are also telescopes called refractors and cadioptrics. Cadioptrics are a combination of reflectors and refractors. They use... Um, they use a tube, they use tubes, but they also use the mirrors of reflectors. So where refractors are really good is if you have a fast focal ratio refractor, those are really good for viewing planets. You get really sharp images. But overall, reflectors are better because of how they're made. They can get better, um, better images. So, the, um, the... The place where cadioptrics can be good, they're really, in my experience of reviews, even the high-priced cadioptrics, it would be better to get a lower-priced reflector or refractor because of how they work. The cadioptrics, they use a combination of tubes and mirrors, and everything I have read is they have really poor image quality. I was recently, before I got this telescope, looking at the um, Celestron Nexstar 6SE, and that's a cadioptric, and it was a really good telescope, nice and portable. It offered a lot, a lot of value for the price, but it was a cadioptric, and one of the downsides in the reviews that I had read is that it had poor image quality. So that is something to keep in mind when you're thinking about buying a telescope is what is your target? What do you want to look at? What are you trying to view? And then you do research. What is the best telescope for me? So this has been a video about choosing your telescope.